So I'm just about to give blood for a Godzilla X Kong promo, and I'm afraid of needles. That was me five days before Godzilla X Kong came out. I was so excited for this movie, and I was willing to do anything for a little promo for it, even facing a fear I've had since I was a little kid. The American Red Cross collaborated with the new Godzilla X Kong movie to entice people to donate. It offered a shirt with Godzilla and Kong striking a pose, both with red bandages on their arms signifying they gave blood. Given the unique premise, my Godzilla collection, and the huge hype for this movie, I had to have this shirt even if it meant sitting with a needle in me for 10 minutes. But I was afraid and I needed something to help me calm down and push me through this anxiety that I was feeling. So I decided to turn to the kaijus that got me into this and I planned to watch Godzilla vs. Kong as I gave my donation. And that's the funny thing about these Monster vs. Godzilla movies. They can be exactly what you need at the right time. When the Godzilla x Kong trailer dropped, I remember the sheer excitement I had. It was just like Godzilla vs. Kong, except bigger, more monsters, and most importantly, more kaiju beatdowns. But Godzilla vs. Kong's release was an interesting one. It came out during the COVID-19 pandemic, and it went right to streaming services. I invited friends over, we ordered barbecue, cranked up the sound, and yelled, cheered, and were rowdy the entire movie. It was the nerdy version of watching a pay-per-view fight. And when I see a Monster vs. Godzilla movie, I'm not looking for Shakespeare. And sometimes it's that explosive, high-octane CGI slugfest that's exactly what the doctor ordered. During the COVID-19 pandemic, people loved this movie because the real world was anxiety-inducing. People were dying, losing jobs, rioting, politics were crazy, money was tight, and I was nervous and stuck at home. Godzilla vs. Kong was a two-hour break from a constant barrage of scary news that flooded the TV every single day. And that's why I turned to this movie as I prepared to sit in that chair and give blood. When I first heard the news of the promo, I was excited but it took me a few days to make the appointment, and I seriously debated not making the appointment at all, but I couldn't let my anxiety rob me of this unique collaboration. So I needed a little bit of help, and I booted up Godzilla vs. Kong to keep me grounded, and probably pump my blood a little faster, because how can a scene like this not? But was all this personal hype worth it for a t-shirt? I mean, was this movie even going to be good? Unlike Godzilla vs. Kong, this movie was marketed differently. There is a real mystery surrounding the actual villains and what new challenges await Kong. Instead of hip-hop and rock, we get standard orchestral swells that add drama. And Godzilla and Kong are, for lack of a better phrase, buddy cops working together to clean up the monster streets. I remember when that trailer came out and people were complaining like, oh, Godzilla can't run that fast and oh no, it's gonna be cheesy. Shut up. That scene gave me exactly what I wanted and so does this movie. Godzilla x Kong knows exactly what we are there to see giant monster fighting action. Godzilla destroys cities, fights monsters, and even blows a monster's face off. Meanwhile, Kong, who is the real star of the movie, is a straight up bruiser, giving us satisfying punches, wrestling moves, and even beats up a gang of giant apes with a smaller ape. Putting Kong against a lankier, more agile giant primate that is also a tyrant that enslaves his own kind is a great way to fire up the audience. You love to hate characters like Scar, and Kong has become such a lovable character to root for. He has been through so much, like losing his family, fighting for his life, and getting messed up by Godzilla. It's weird to say that we can all relate to Kong, but it's true. We've all gotten knocked down in some way, dealt with a bully, and tried to find where we belong. There's comfort in seeing a relatable character fight for what's right and for himself. Usually these types of movies just give you giant monster fights, but Kong gives us an actual story with mostly just grunts and gorilla noises. When he confronts Scar, no words are spoken, yet you totally understand what's taking place. On the other hand, the humans in this movie do an awful lot of talking, but their emotional moments felt lost on me and felt like they dragged on as I waited for another giant monster to appear on screen. Because when we do get to the monsters, we get this comic book level of insanity that revs me up. Godzilla blasts Scylla's head off, Godzilla suplexes Kong, and we get a zero gravity fight between giant apes, two huge prehistoric monsters, and a moth that shoots webs. And speaking of that moth, Mothra is my favorite kaiju ever, and in my reaction to this movie I proved that by getting a little too excited by her appearance. And we could easily see her again, 
And I'm, we can have a Mothra movie. I thought that. We gonna, give me a Mothra, another Mothra figure, you idiots. I don't know who I'm talking to, but call up Dan Hollywood and tell him, give me Mothra figures, I'm gonna freak out. This movie let Mothra shine by giving her a tribe of supporters. She got in on the action and was crucial to Godzilla and Kong's story, and we got pieces of her lore that people who never saw the old movies may have never known. And if you aren't a Godzilla fanatic, you don't like over-the-top action, or you really just didn't like this movie, that's okay. Maybe you like your movies with a lot of substance and having deep reflections. I like both, but movies like this give me comfort and are scientifically good for me. Dopamine is a chemical in your brain that gives you that feel-good feeling and motivates you to do something that gives you pleasure. It gives you happy feelings, satisfaction, and it's a great motivator, like how getting a cool shirt made me so excited that I pushed through a fear I had since childhood. And there is a whole scientific paper that dives into how movies can do this. Godzilla X Kong gave me that dopamine mean by showing me huge action sequences, familiar monsters that I adore, crazy visuals, and a story that was both exciting and somewhat touching. But it also gave me dopamine in the way that I was excited to see the movie. That I got to talk to friends about what we loved and what we didn't. The fact that I can come home and talk about that movie into a camera. I met other Godzilla fans like this cool guy as I walked in. The euphoria of sitting in a 4DX theater being jostled around to Kong's punches. And maybe, just maybe, a handful of fans like me will watch this video and keep talking to me about Godzilla fandom. It motivates me to not just relax and have a good time, but connect with other like-minded humans so I can get more dopamine and keep talking about my favorite kaiju. This is why I watched Godzilla vs. Kong before I gave blood. I was anxious. I needed something to calm my nerves because if I didn't sit in that chair, then I couldn't get that shirt that I was craving. Godzilla and Kong were that dopamine release to not just muster the courage to face that needle, but also relax me as I sat for a quick 10 minutes that felt like hours. I fast forwarded right to the Hong Kong fight. Godzilla and Kong radiating in neon lights. Godzilla chasing down Kong with his atomic breath. Kong smashing Godzilla with an axe made of Godzilla's scale. This crazy first person view of Kong kneeing Godzilla in the jaw. When I walked into the American Red Cross site, I was nervous. I asked a bunch of questions and I sweat a lot. But I gave blood and got a super cool shirt to remember it. But I also realized that maybe I'm not afraid of needles. Maybe all I needed was a little comfort to calm me down. Godzilla and Kong's relationship was that comfort for me to push me to face a fear and get a memory out of that experience. I even wore that shirt to the premiere at my local theater. It's fair to say that Godzilla and his movies are a bit of an obsession with me, but these movies make me feel happy and also just make me think about how I feel. Much like how Godzilla Minus One hit me with an emotional gut punch about my journey as a new father. And to hear more about that, you could check out this video right here.